Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If y'all are new here, my name is JJ, and in today's video is one that has been highly requested from all of you out there. Now, some of you may know I have been using Fidelity now as my main brokerage. I am still using Robinhood and Moomoo as some of my other brokerages that I'm testing things out and do little moves here or there with, but Fidelity is my main go-to brokerage that I use now. And with that, a lot of you know that I trade options, and a lot of you have been asking for a Fidelity options trading video for beginners. How to use the app, how to trade options on the app, because it does look a little more complicated on the Fidelity app than looking at something like Robinhood. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna learn how to trade options. We're gonna be talking about buying calls and puts, selling calls and puts, and how you can do this and set this up properly using the Fidelity app, and also showing you guys how to do this in Fidelity's beta version of the app. But first, before we get that started, I do have a couple things. First one, drink beer by stocks, baby. We're cracking open a uh, nice cold one. It's a Oscar's Lager. Never had this brewery. It's an Oscar Blues brewery. Uh, it's just your typical American pale lager. Um, so, cheers. And it's also Friday when I'm filming this video, so cheers again. I also quickly want to mention, if you guys want some free stocks, I have links down below in my description where you guys can sign up for the different brokerages down there. Grab those free stocks. It's free money. Why wouldn't you do it? And also, if you guys are interested in joining my Discord, in my Discord, I post my options trades real time when I'm buying, selling options. I also post all of my stock moves when I'm buying and selling stocks. If that interests you guys and you want to sign up, there's a link down below where you can sign up for the Patreon as well and get access to that Discord. So with all that being said, Let's hop into my Fidelity app. Let's look at the beta version of the app, and we will learn how to properly buy and sell calls and puts options using the Fidelity app. All right, guys, so this is the Fidelity app, and again, this is the beta version of this app. If you guys clicked on your Fidelity app and you are not sure how to get this or you don't see this beta version, the way you can do this if you are an iOS user is click this More tab down at the bottom right-hand corner. There'll be a beta trading experience. You can just select that button, make sure it's highlighted green, and then come back to the home tab, and then your pro portfolio should show up as the beta version. Now, as of currently filming, it's July 16th, 2021. And if you are an Android user, the beta version for Androids are not currently available yet, but Fidelity said that it should be out later towards the end of 2021 this summer, or maybe a little bit further than that. They weren't exactly sure, but hopefully it's coming to you guys soon. So, okay, let's get into this thing here. So this is, again, my portfolio. The stock we're going to be using today for today's example is a stock known as AT&T. So let's do a quick search here since I don't own that in my actual portfolio. And it's going to bring this up to our details page of the stock for the Fidelity app. So again, looking at this, there is a buy option here at the bottom of the app. There will also be a sell option if you own any shares in, in this stock. Uh, with AT&T, I don't currently own any shares, hence why that sell tab is not available. But if you are wanting to do options trading with AT&T, scroll down on this details page of AT&T and you will find a selection here that says options chain and you will click that. Now, the first thing that you will notice whenever you select this is that this is very busy. I'll be honest with you, coming from trading options on Robinhood to now doing it on Fidelity, it was a bit overwhelming just trying to get used to the user interface and how everything's set up on Fidelity. But that's what I want to go step by step with you today to show you exactly how you can do this. We're going to go through all the different examples of buying calls and puts and selling calls and puts because it's a little bit different setup than how it is with Robinhood. So again, we're looking at the options chain here on Fidelity. And the first thing I want to look at is these three kind of gray tabs here at the bottom, the calls and puts, strikes, and weekly tab. So what these tabs are showing you looking first here as the calls and puts is what you're going to see at this bottom. So you can select this here and this will show the different types of strategies that you can choose. Now for today's video, we're only going to be looking at calls and puts because this is a more of a beginner type video and we're not getting into the nitty gritty details of trading options, but you can select different strategies for iron condors, for you know straddles and whatever it may be. But again, we are doing calls and puts only. Now a cool part about this is if you are no, if you already know you're only interested in buying calls or you're only interested in selling calls or buying puts or whatever that may be, right now I have both calls and puts selected as you can see here. 
Now, if you want to select calls only, press done, then this will only show you calls you can select. So it just if you already know what you're going to be doing going into this trade, then you can you know choose that if you want. But I usually just leave calls and puts open. You'll see here why in a second. So now I have that selected. Now let's look at the strikes tab here. So the strikes and then the number 10 is telling you how many strike prices will be shown for each expiration date. So if you scroll down here, you can see for July 16th, which is today, that's one thing I like about Fidelity too, is you can, you know, you can trade options on the day of expiration. But you can see here from 2650 down to 31 is 10 different strike prices available. Now let's say you're wanting to make some big YOLO trade or something, some far out of the money call option. You can choose to find more strikes available by clicking this tab. You can choose to see 20 strikes, or you can choose to see all strikes, or you can even do a customization of what pr strike price you want to look at. I typically just like to keep it at 10, and if there's dumb, some different scenario that comes up that I need to look at more strike prices, then I'll just change that. But I usually like to keep it at 10 because it keeps it pretty clean. Now, the next one here is the weekly. Uh, this just turns off your expiration dates on a weekly basis and turns it on on a monthly basis. I always keep my weeklies on because if you look down at the next little section here, these little blue boxes with these dates on it, those are your expiration dates. Now, quickly, expiration dates, if you're not sure what those means, those are the date of expiration that your option will be expired. So if you are selling a call option, then your expiration date on that is whatever date you select. We'll get to that in a little bit more detail here in a second. But if you are saying, well, I'm not interested in looking at the July 16th and July 23rd expiration date, simply click those and then that'll hide them. And then now you see we're looking at the July 30th uh, July 30th expiration date here. And then you can choose to you know select whichever strike price you want available. If you do want to keep all of those on, again, just simply click them back and then they go back to that kind of more bold looking blue, not the not the grayed out blue, and they will show back up here. So we're going to look at the July 23rd strike price. So now we got those selections kind of out of the way. Let's look at the actual options chain here. So as you can see, in the very middle column is the strike price, and then below that shows the expiration date you're looking at. So right now we're looking at July 23rd. If we want to scroll down, we can see July 30th, and so on and so forth. So going back to July 23rd strike price, or expiration date, excuse me, we are again looking at calls and puts. So it shows our calls on the left side, and it shows our puts on the right side. So for example, let's look at these different columns and what they mean. So this last column right here on the very left-hand side on the call side, the last column is showing you the premium. The premium is the amount of price that you are going to pay to buy a call or put. And it's also the showing you the price that you will earn if you are selling a call or put. And we'll get to more of that detail here in a second. Now, the CHG, that stands for change, that's showing you that the amount of change in a dollar amount that these premiums on this last column have has, has changed. And same thing with the percent. It shows you on a percent basis rather than an actual dollar amount. So as you can see here, uh, looking at the $29 strike price, it's showing that at this $23 premium or $0.23 cent premium, it's currently up $0.02 cents on the day. So that's what those are showing. Now, next, we're looking at the bid and ask price. And the cool thing here is as you scroll on the right or on the left side, it's also showing you the same format on the put side. So as you slide over, it's going to show you both bid and ask spreads on the call section and the put section. So the bid and ask spread is simply showing that premium, that price point at what you are currently seeing as the bid and ask. And that's kind of how it can set you up on where you want to place your trade at and set your limit price at if you're wanting to get the option executed as of right now. Now, if you have your own limit price set, that's a totally different scenario, but that's just showing you the bid and ask, ask price for each option. And then lastly, we have the volume of options being traded, and then the OPINT is open interest, and that indicates the total number of options contracts that are currently out there. I don't typically look at this too much, um, but it is there if you guys want to take a look. Okay, so now that we went through the different things that you can look at on the options chain, let's look at a couple examples. But first, what I want to talk about here is Comparing this to Robinhood, I feel like Robinhood user's interface is a lot more cleaner than Fidelity, and I also like how you can select, you know, if you're going to buy a call, buy a put, sell a call, sell a put, for example. But with Fidelity, it's a little bit different. 
you know, there's no options to exactly select, you know, buy a put or buy a call or whatever. It's a little bit different. So let's just look at a random strike price here of $29. And we'll get into different scenarios here in a second. But as you can see, you have both calls and puts selected to see. So when you click that strike price, it's going to say, are you interested in a call or a put? We'll just select call here for an example. And then what I was getting at here is I'm going to put one in for my contract of my quantity. So now this gives you the option to buy to open, buy to close, sell to open, or sell to close. Now, some of you may have already heard of this because it does show up like this on Robinhood as well, but to actually place your trade, it's a little bit different. And what I mean by that is, is let's go to the Robinhood portfolio real quick or the Robin, my Robinhood portfolio. And I just want to show you quickly what I mean by that. So we'll trade options. Let's go to the 23rd expiration. So you can see up here, you can choose to buy a call, buy a put sell a put, sell a call. It's really easy to navigate between the two to where with the fidelity, it's a little different. So let's go through these four different scenarios right here and what these mean, because this is very important to understand. I'll have a little table somewhere. You guys can do a little screenshot or something to make sure that you have a, a, a for sure understanding before placing any options trade on the fidelity app. So buy to open. Buy to open means you are looking to either buy a call or buy a put. So if I am wanting to buy a call option on AT&T, then I would select buy to open. And then you can place your trade there. Now, if you are looking to sell a call or put, which we had call selected, but if you're looking to sell a call or put, you would select sell to open. So sell to open means you are the writer of that contract. That means you are wanting to sell a call or put. And selling a call or put goes back to the, you know, your cash secured put, your, your um, covered calls. So that is whenever you want to do a cash secured put or a covered call, you use the option sell to open. Now buy to close, what buy to close means is whenever you just did that example of selling a call or put, and let's say it's gone up in value and you want to take some of those profits, to close out that option, you would select buy to close because you do the exact opposite of however you opened up that initial trade. So again, if you are selling a put or selling a call, you would click buy to close to close out that option. But let's say you bought a call or bought a put, then you would use sell to close to close that, uh, that call or put you just purchased. So those are the four different scenarios that come up whenever you are buying or selling options. Now let's run through some quick examples here of how exactly these work. So first, we're going to look at my favorite side of trading options, and that is selling calls and selling puts. I like this because it's a little bit less, uh, it's a little bit more conservative when trading options, and it's also a great way to earn some weekly and monthly income. I do this in all of my portfolios. So first, let's look at a cash accrued put. So that is a selling put option. So I have a lot more detailed video on this on my channel if you guys want to check those out. But just for a quick example here, when you are selling a put option, you are either one of two things. You're bullish on a stock price and you think that stock price is going to keep going up. So if you buy or if you sell a put option on a strike price that's under the current price of that stock. So right now, at and uh, trading at $28.54. Let's assume I want to sell a put option at $27 strike price then I would be earning that six cents in premium. And again, a one contract equals 100 shares. The premium here, that six cents is on a per share basis. So that would be saying that I would actually earn $6 from place, placing this trade automatically. Now, as a reminder here, when you're selling a put option, that is saying that you are willing to purchase 100 shares or however many contracts you place, but let's assume you're using one contract one contract is on a 100 share basis. So if you say you are willing to sell a put option at the $27 strike price, that's saying that you are willing to purchase 100 shares of AT&T at $27. So you would need $2,700 in collateral in your cash account to place this trade. And then come the expiration, let's say come July 23rd, it ex expires and the strike price is actually under 27. So let's say it's at the 26.55. Let's say it's trading at 26.55 come closing day on July 23rd. Then you will still have to buy 100 shares of AT&T at $27, even though it's currently trading below that. So that's a, that's a risk of selling options here. So let's run through this real quick. So we're assuming 
that we are going to sell a put option on AT&T at the $27 strike price. We're still going to select put here. So then we're going to enter our quantity. We're only going to do one. So we're actually going to click sell to open because like I said before, selling to open means you are selling a call or a put. In this example, we're wanting to do a selling a put, a cash secured put. So we'll select sell to open. And then down here, we will select a market or limit order. I always like to place limit orders. So looking at your limit price here, you can do that by looking at your bid ask spread just above here. So the current bid is 0 0.05. The current ask is 0 0.06. So you can go on the lower end here at the 0 0.05 to try and get this order uh, filled auto automatically right away. Or if you want to, you can put it on six cents and see if that price or if this order still gets fulfilled, even though you're on the ask side, because you will most likely get a order filled faster if you put your limit order in on the bid price. And then we'll put in the time of forces of today. The conditions will be none. And then you can select preview order. And then I'm not going to go forward with this, this order, but that's how you would uh, sell a put option on the Fidelity app. So now let's look at covered calls. So covered calls, again, guys, I know I'm kind of running through this quickly. If you guys are wanting more in-depth details of covered calls, you know, cash crude puts and what exactly those mean, I have videos on those. If you just search in my name and those videos will pop up. Um, but if you click options chain here, and now we're looking at the, again, July 23rd strike price. So the covered call is the exact opposite of selling a put. So let's say, you know, when you're selling a put, you're willing to buy 100 shares of that strike price. Well, now selling a covered call assumes you already own 100 shares. You have to own 100 shares to place a covered call. And that's saying you're willing to sell your 100 shares at that current strike price. So right now, again, AT&T is still trading at that $21.50 range. Let's say we assume we are we own 100 shares in AT&T. So, and we are willing to sell those 100 shares of AT&T at $30 because let's think we may not think it get AT&T gets to $30 by the expiration date of July 23rd. And we usually don't want to get assigned. You know, we're just looking to do this for for income purposes. Now, if you, I will say this, don't do this strategy on stocks that you are not willing to sell. You know, if you have 100 shares of Apple and you never want to sell it, don't place covered calls on your Apple shares. But if you're okay with selling 100 shares of AT&T to earn some income, then so be it. So looking at this $30 strike price here, now we're looking on the left side because we're looking at, uh, you know, selling covered calls, which is selling a call, then we'll get $6 in premium after we place this one. So we'll click that $30 strike, select call, type in one. And again, we're selecting sell to open because we are selling a covered call. And then you will do the same thing that we did, placing your, you know, your limit order where you feel comfortable based on a bid ask. So the bid is, is six cents. So we would just put six in there, preview order, and there you go. You can sell your covered call. So that's how you can earn some weekly and monthly income by selling call and put options. Now, looking quickly here, if you're looking to buy a call or put option, then you can go back down to this options chain on AT&T. Let's say we're looking at the July 23rd strike, and we're going to buy a call at the $30 strike. So we'll select the $30 strike option. We'll select call. We're going to select, let's just say we're going to buy two contracts. And instead of selecting sell to open, we're going to select buy to open. So then you would select buy to open because you're buying the call option now. You're not a seller here. There's no agreement, you know, of saying you're going to have to purchase 100 shares or anything like that. There's no obligation to have to purchase at that strike price. So it's a little different than selling. So again, you can come down here, select market order or limit order, select your limit price based on the bid and ask, preview order, and then you can buy call options in Fidelity app by doing that. And the same thing goes for buying puts. Whenever you buy calls or buy puts, you are either bullish or bearish on that stock. So if I assume AT&T is going to be going up in value within the next week or so, then I would most likely want to buy some calls. Now, I typically only buy calls on a leap. So what that means is I'm buying calls on out a year or two years out. My expirations date are usually in 2022 or 2023, depending on whenever I can set that expiration date up. Just because I don't like buying calls and puts on a short notice, a short expiration date, because that's very, very risky. It's very hard 
to determine if a stock price is going to go up and down or in value at such a short amount of time. But again, if you want to buy the put option, you can you know select down here, 2750, you select put, and you again, you're doing the same thing over and over. So guys, I hope this helped you out a little bit to navigate you know, how to buy puts and calls and sell puts and calls in the Fidelity app. Again, I wasn't trying to go into like the nitty gritty details of exactly like what everything means because I'm assuming you guys out there have a decent understanding. If not, please go back and watch my options videos and you'll be able to learn how to do all that and what those mean and what different scenarios you, why you'd want to buy a call or put or sell a call or put. I, I tried to explain that a little bit in today's video, but a little bit more in depth. I have other videos out there. But again, guys, I hope this helped you. I hope this was helpful. If it was valuable, please hit that like button down below. That really does help out the channel. It helps out the video to promote this to more people. And again, guys, if you want to check out those free stocks down below, sign up. Uh, using those links down below in the description. Get your free stocks. It's free money. Also, again, cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, you all take care. Cheers.